Yes, hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. This is the Clarets Daily News here on Turfcast. We've actually got quite a lot of stuff to fit into today's show, so I'll try not to waffle uh, as much as I usually do. Uh, first of all, we'll start with the managerial search because there's some new reports out from the last day from both Sasha Tovalira and Alan Nixon, and they are basically saying that there are new candidates the new candidates being interviewed new candidates being spoken to uh, we'll start off with the report from alan nixon dingle underscore reese who is the burnley fan in this scenario says did you not mention burnley were interviewing a few more candidates this week and he said yes and i think re-interviewing some too alan pace did that last time uh, and then a couple of hours later belgian journalist sasha tobalera tweeted this Burnley FC still want a name and an ex-player known at international level in that order the profile of Ruud van Nistelrooy came on the last hours alongside Carlos Corberan and another option that hasn't been revealed yet there was a report yesterday about Carlos Corberan there's a report now about a name that hasn't come out yet could that be Bo Henriksen that we were speaking about the other day? Or the other lad that has names for, uh, escaped me instantly? But there was two names that came out yesterday that weren't from Sasha, that were more just from fans trying to work it out in the Reds. And that was Bo Henriksen, like I said, and another one whose name escaped me again. Um, but it could be one of them two. Fingers crossed it's Bo Henriksen when I have um, a five on him at 100-1. to one. Like I said yesterday, I'd be very surprised if it's him. Um, but yeah, Nixon and Sasha both reporting similar things. Nixon going on about the fact that we're doing more interviews this week. And obviously it sounds like certain people have progressed to the next level of the interviews and other people are being interviewed as well. And like I said, that kind of matches up yesterday with what we were saying about that report about Carlos Corberan because Carlos Corberan has recently missed out on the Leicester job because it looks like they're going to be going for Steve Cooper. So maybe, just maybe... The reason why they didn't interview Corbrand last week is because they thought he was getting the lesser job. Now he knows he's not getting the lesser job. He's now interested in the Berlin job. I'd take Corbrand, if I'm being honest with you. I'd also take Ruud van Nistelrooy. Now, there's been other reports that Lampard is out of the running. He has been doing a lot of punditry work at Euro 2024. You will have seen him on... Is he on ITV or BBC or potentially even both? I don't know, but you'll have seen him on on TV. But with the tweet that um, Sasha was saying about how he wants, uh, uh, sorry, how Pace want, wants a name and an ex-player known at international level, Frank Lampard fits that bill, right? Like He does fit that bill. He may not be a great manager, but he, he fits the bill of a name and an ex-player at international level. So yeah, seems like it's one step forward and, and one step back again with the manager. It's all up in the air at the minute. It looked like it was settling down and we could be getting an announcement soon. But if the reports are to be believed, and with it being two different journalists saying similar things, but not necessarily the exact same thing, but you know how it's potentially still moving and more names are coming in and more people are being interviewed then it may not be as close as we originally thought. But in the words of Sasha, I guess we'll wait and see. It's time for more chat about everyone's favourite Dutchman, Valt Veghorst. Now, we reported on yesterday's show that Ajax were interested. This comes after we reported. I say we. We picked up the reports from Holland a few days ago. Well, actually, I think it was last week that FC20 were looking at him and the FC20 director had said that he was confident of being able to sign Veghorst on a permanent deal for them. Now, it turns out, obviously, like I said yesterday, Ajax were interested. Ajax are a bigger club, obviously, who have far more history and probably a lot more pulling power. Well, it was tweeted today, really early in the morning, actually, about half eight in the morning, when I say today, I obviously mean yesterday. I'm recording it today, but I mean when the time you're watching this, it, it's he it, it tweeted it on Wednesday. Um, he says talks between Valt Veghorst and Ajax on personal terms are already very advanced. All parties are confident to make the deal happen. Negotiations to follow with Burnley, but Ajax are now increasingly optimistic to bring Veghorst to the club. Now. When he says talks between all parties, sorry, when he says all parties confident to make the deal happen, I presume he just means Vegos and Ajax because it does then go on to say 
negotiations to follow with Burnley, but I would suspect we would want to get rid of him. I would imagine in this scenario, it's a case of the agent has spoken to Burnley and said, look, Ajax are interested. I presume you don't want to lose him for free next summer. I presume you want to get some money for him. And we've said, yes, feel free to let him talk to them. I don't know. That's just obviously a guess. But I would suspect Veghorst finally leaves this summer, finally leaves on a permanent. And like, like I said yesterday, we can just draw a line in the sand under it, whether you think he should stay, whether you believed him with the World Cup stuff, whether you believe the fact that company didn't want him. I guess it doesn't really matter anymore. He's not going to be a Burnley player. And I personally, I'm just I'm just glad that the whole debacle, because that's what it's been. He's, he came in with all this promise, did relatively okay in some games in that six months when we got first got relegated from the Premier League, but never really did enough. There's been signs when he's been away on loan, especially when he's playing for Holland or the Netherlands, whichever they prefer to be called these days. I just feel that he's just not ever really wanted to play for Burnley since that first relegation. That's that's just how I feel. I guess, like I said a few seconds ago, I guess it doesn't really matter anymore. Um, but it's looking like Vegos wants to go to Ajax. It's looking like Ajax want Vegos, and I would suspect that Burnley wants to get rid of him instead of letting him leave on a free. So I think this one will probably happen and probably happen as soon as he gets home from the Euros because then he can put pen to paper with Ajax. Now, another one that could be on his way out of Turf Moor this summer is Scott Twine. He's another one, of course, like Valt Vegos that has spent some time away from Turf Moor already on loan. He, of course, spent the first half of last season on loan at Hull, then the second half of last season on loan at Bristol City. Now, I think he did a bit better for Bristol City than he did for Hull. He didn't play as many games at Bristol City, but the Bristol City fans over on Twitter and, and, and the fans that I speak to in certain WhatsApp groups and stuff through the podcasting and that do have a high opinion of him, the Bristol City fans, whereas the Hull ones are a bit like, mm, he's a little bit hit and miss. But according to the Bristol Post, Bristol City remain in talks to try and conclude a deal for Burnley's Scott Twine. The Robins are confident that a deal can be struck and if terms are agreed, it should be a quick transfer to process. Like I said, that's from the Bristol Post and the tweet was obviously on your screen just then, but just to go in, with a little bit more detail into the article, they go on to say Bristol City remain in talks with Burnley to try and conclude a deal for Scott Twine with confidence that a deal can be done. Bristol Live understands Twine has been using the high performance centre in the city to undertake some of his off-season training ahead of the start of pre-season at the end of this month, whether that be for Bristol City or for Burnley. The 24-year-old is, of course, local to the area, having grown up in Royal Wotton Bassett, which is apparently just a 45-minute drive away from Bristol, where his family still live, but they also say it could be viewed as a sign of his intentions, providing the two championship clubs can come to an agreement over his transfer fee. The Clarets did value the playmaker at £5 million in the January transfer window, hence why City were only able to conclude a loan deal. But, they say, with Burnley now back in the Championship and Twine seemingly set on a move away from Turf Moor, maybe that's wishful thinking on their part, I've not seen anything to suggest that he is, but they do believe that that will make the figure likely to fall sharply is the word that they use. Again, I think that's wishful thinking. £5 million, I think, is a good price for Scott Twine. Like I would personally rather keep him. I wouldn't have him starting, though. So maybe he wants to go to a side where he can actually start matches, which should be fair enough. You know, I presume he's an ambitious man and he will want to potentially start for a club around the area that he's from. If, if that is the pull, then fair enough. But we have to make the money. Yeah, we have to get the right money for him. All this fees will fall sharply. I'm, I think that's just wishful thinking from them. I don't see why we would... Put it this way... We bought him for, what was it, two and a half million? I think, off the top of my head, should really start checking these before I say stuff like that. But I, I can't see why we'd sell him for any less. Minimum is make a profit. Minimum is make a profit because he did okay for us in the championship season and then he's gone on okay for Bristol City as well. So if he wants to leave, let him leave. If he doesn't want to play 
backup slash rotation and he wants to go and start for somebody else, then fine, that's up to him. Let him do that. But don't be letting him go for anything less than what we bought him for, in my opinion. But like I said, I will keep him, but as kind of like backup or probably more so of like a, a squad rotation thing. Similar to what he did in the first year under Vincent Company. But of course, we'll have to see what the manager wants to do, whatever manager that is, what they want to do when they come in. Now, it's not all doom and gloom because all I've spoken about so far is the fact that we don't seem to be anywhere nearer to a manager and players leaving. But there has been a report today about the potential of somebody coming in. The reason why I've left it till last is because, I'll be honest with you, I've never heard of the guy and it just, it smells like agent talk to me. Now, it's from Sasha Tovalera uh, and basically the tweet is exclusive. Three clubs of the Skybet Championship are chasing Eli Kamara. I've, I've definitely butchered that name. I apologise to the lad if I have. Preston North End, Coventry City and Burnley FC are very interested in his profile. Uh, Stad de Rem consider camera as an option for this summer as well. Wait and see, he says. Now, what I've found interesting um, with this is uh, he's only 21, he's a wing back and plays on the right. Now, we have Connor Roberts at the minute. He may or may not go back to Leeds. He may or may not be shipped off somewhere else. He, he might want to go back to Swansea. I'm not sure. Um, but we've also got the new lad coming in, Shirandi Sanborn. I think he plays on the right as well. So if we've already got Connor and Vitinho, who can play on both, and the new lad coming in, then I don't know. It just I can't see why we would want him unless he's one for the future. Now, the reason, only reason why I said earlier why I think it's agent talk is because Sasha wasn't actually the first with this. The first I saw of this was in the Lancashire Evening Post, which, for those of you that don't know, is a local newspaper to Preston, like the Preston City region, and they just did an article about how Preston are looking at him, and all of a sudden, a few hours later... There's some rumours of three other clubs after him, Burnley, Coventry and obviously Stade de Rem. That potentially tells me like maybe there's a bit of agent talk going on. Maybe Preston are interested in him and the agent's trying to push the deal through. I'm not sure because maybe Preston were looking at stalling. But yeah, I left that one till last, even though it is an incoming because it just, it just smells like agent talk, that one to me. Honestly, it really, really does. I'd be surprised if we signed him. I watched some clips of him on YouTube today, and I know he shouldn't do that, but I do it every time we link with somebody. And he does look all right, but everybody looks good on YouTube, right? I could probably make myself look good as a footballer on YouTube. But that's it for today. Unfortunately, the manager doesn't seem any closer, but as long as they take the time, put it this way, if they take their time and get Cole running, I'll be happy. If they get their time and get Ruud van Nistelrooy in instead of jumping into Frank Lampard, I'll be happy. Um, Vegost and Twine. Vegost, I don't think many people will be shedding a tear. I think Twine will probably be 50 50. Yeah. Some, I think some fans will want to keep him like I do, um, but we'll understand if he wants to leave and play in regular first team football. But let me know what you think in the comments below about all of today's stuff in the show. Do you think the manager's close? Do you think the, the club are stalling on it a little bit because new candidates have come in? Do you not believe any of the stories? What about Vegost? What do you think about Vegost? Twine, like I said, I think I want him to stay, but if he wants to play first team football, that's fine by me. And if you do know anything about Ili Kamara, then please let me know, because I definitely don't. But we'll see you again tomorrow.